For the past few days, the Monster Hunter team have released a new Switch skills and Silkbind skills for each of the 14 weapon types. Some weapon types got a positive feedback and some had it real bad. In this video, I'll assume you've already watched some of the Greatsword analysis video of other players. I'll be sharing my thoughts on how this iteration of Greatsword will change the way how we used to play the weapon. And I'll be sharing with you what was Greatsword like back then in the old generation. You see, for the past few days, I've been playing Freedom Unite and been using the Greatsword. And I can tell you, we've gone a long way from what we have right now in the 5th generation. During my hunts in the old generation, whenever the monster spins its body, roars, or even flies down from the skies, I just had this muscle reflex to, hey, I can just tackle this move. But of course, you can't. And I ended up getting smacked around. I think it was a good reminder that, oh yeah, positioning was super important back then since you can't tank nor hyper armor any moves back then. Greatsword was a very simplistic weapon back in the early days of Monster Hunter. If we think about the changes for the past few generations, Generation 1 is where the Greatsword literally had no charge mechanics. Generation 2 is where they added it and made us a bit more creative with our hunts. It's the birth of the Greatsword where you stand and head snipe the monster in multiple ways. Generation 3 is where they added added a few follow-up combo moves that made the Greatsword a bit better. Generation 4 is where Greatsword significantly changed. If we talk more about the 4th generation, especially the Greatsword iteration of Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, besides other hunting styles such as Guild, Aerial, Striker and Alchemy, Adept Style Greatsword, and Valor Greatsword are the ones that really push the Greatsword to what it can really do. To explain a bit, Adept Style is quite an aggressive style of Greatsword. You dodge an attack and follow up by running towards the monster while charging the greatsword. Not only that, but you can also combo it up with another fast level 3 charge. Valor style on the other hand gave insane mobility and speed to a slow moving greatsword. There's valor stance to dodge the move, valor dash to reposition yourself, super level 3 charge, and you can also do a valor dash while charging to close the gap, faster level 3 charge on top of focus skill and there's another iteration of that like the forward foot and do a level 3 charge. Basically it was the most mobile version of the greatsword. 5th generation came. In Monster Hunter World and Iceborne, they slowed down the pacing of the greatsword in exchange of new combos with the use of slinger ammo and they also introduced a new move called Tackle that can hyper armor any monster attack. Any move that can disrupt your charge attack can be tackled and you can follow it up with either charge attack or greatsword sweep attack. However, with the introduction of Monster Hunter Rise, it's where they really ramped up the Greatsword hunting playstyle again, doubling down on the speed and mobility of the Greatsword weapon. Essentially, Rise version of Greatsword is a combination between the Greatsword from Monster Hunter World with the Tackle and TCS, and some of the moves from Monster Hunter Generations with Rage Slash, formerly known as Brimstone Slash, Adamant Charge, it's a modified version of Valor Dash with more control plus hyper armor and lastly greatsword special sheet a modified version of the lion's maw and of course with the introduction of sunbreak they've introduced two new movesets that could potentially change the way we used to play the greatsword one move is a counter and the other is a multi-hit combo swapping out the usual three charge attacks Let's talk about the multi-hit combo first. The Surge Slash Combo, SSC. Finally, it's been 5 generations. This is the closest move that we could ask for to make the status and elemental greatswords viable. Usually the case here is you'd always choose raw damage over everything, but we can't be too sure yet if this move is going to be a game changer for us. We have to test this out once Sunbreak comes out, but what really matters here is there was an attempt. It's better than nothing, right? Besides. If you think of it this way, this is really useful when you're out and hunting for small monsters and for some hunters out there, they still want to use the greatsword but they're just tired of whiffing a charge attack so it's a nice variety that we can swing the giant sword instead. Greatsword counter, the strong arm stance, SAS. Anyhow, I think they added this for good reasons because based on the gameplay clips that they've shown on Sunbreak, a lot of the monsters have crazy follow-up attacks and large AoE hovering almost the entire 
entire area. So being able to counter block or hyper armor is a big help for us greatsword players. I'm quite excited for what they did with Greatsword. I've ran a poll to see how many of you out there think of the Greatsword version of Sunbreak. Most of you liked it and some still lingers the old ways, which is understandable. Personally, I prefer the good old Greatsword playstyle. The essence of just learning how to predict the next move and punishing the monster is absolutely satisfying. But as an old hunter, seeing the continuous growth of what Greatsword has been throughout each generation, I'm open in trying new things. And besides, this is Sunbreak. It's not the usual slow-paced monster hunter that we know, so I'm fine with it if they dial everything up, just not on the 6th gen of Monster Hunter.